In this video, we'll be discussing about the hemostasis or hemostasis. It is the process which causes bleeding to stop, meaning to keep blood within a damaged blood vessel. It is the opposite of hemorrhage. This process involves two processes, platelet plug formation and the clot formation. Although both these processes occur simultaneously, but in order to make it easy, in order to make it understandable, we will discuss these two processes separately. We see the platelet plug formation is the primary hemostasis, while as clot formation is the secondary hemostasis. The platelet plug formation is aided by the platelets in the blood, while as clot formation is aided by the blood clotting factors. So here in this particular video, we'll be discussing about the platelet mediated hemostasis. The platelet mediated hemostasis involves the formation of platelet plug. If we see the blood vessel, it has got blood flowing through it in the form of RBCs shown in the red and platelets shown in the blue color. And there are other blood components and also their blood cells flowing through it. When there is an endothelial damage, the blood leaks out of the vessel. And this leak is to be sealed by platelets and other factors in the process of platelet mediated hemostasis. There are four steps involved in the platelet mediated hemostasis, which are platelet addition, second one is the platelet activation, followed by secretion of ADP, serotonin, PAF and other factors and finally we have platelet aggregation which finalizes the plug formation. First let's get to the platelet addition. We see when there is a damaged blood vessel the blood oozes out of it. It changes the hemodynamic properties of blood. The two proteins play important role here. One is the VWF protein, von Willebrand factor and other one is the collagen protein. Both proteins mediate the platelet addition. First of all, we see prior to the endothelial damage, VWF factor is the mobile protein. But once there is damaged endothelial, the VWF immobilizes and it sticks at the damaged site on blood vessel, as shown in the figure. The VWF factor molecule has got A1 domain in its structure, while as on the platelets we have got GP1B95 complex. And this complex has got GP1B alpha subunit present. And it's this alpha subunit which binds to the A1 domain of VWF. So here in this diagram, we can see VWF then grabs the platelets by A1 alpha subunit binding. So this is how the VWF mediates the addition of platelets. Now let's see how collagen interacts with platelets. In the collagen platelet interaction, the collagen displays alpha 1 CB3 peptide. While as on the platelets, we have cell surface receptors in the form of alpha 2 beta 1 integrin. And we see during the endothelial damage, the integrin receptor receives this CB3 peptide of collagen and mediates the binding of platelet to the collagen, thus adhering the platelets at the damaged site. And also there is a GP6 protein which shows interaction with collagen. So this concludes our platelet addition. Now let's get to the activation and secretion part. In the activation and secretion step, we see the glycoprotein 6 or GP6 present on the platelets gets activated upon endothelial damage. The GP6 protein is a receptor for collagen. It mediates the collagen induced release of several factors from platelets. We see the activated platelets releases ADP molecules from dense granules, VWFR also releases from alpha granules and there is also secretion of thromboxane. And after that, this ADP molecule will further activate platelets and also aids in the granule secretion of clot factors. The ADP molecule mediates the activation of platelets in two pathways via purinergic signaling. The platelets express two different purinergic receptors, P2Y12 receptor and P2Y1 receptor. On the left, the P2Y12 belongs to the GI class of GPCR proteins while as P2Y1 on the right belongs to GQ class of GPCR proteins or GPCR receptors. Remember, there are four families of G proteins having different alpha subunits as shown in the figure. GS alpha subunit, which activates CAMP dependent pathway. GI alpha subunit, it inhibits the CAMP pathway. GQ alpha subunits, it activates IP3 pathway via PLC. And we have G12 alpha subunit. It helps in the row family GTP signaling. But here in this platelet activation, we are dealing with GI class and GQ class only. So upon ligand binding, there is a conformational change in the GPCR. 
where we see that GDP is exchanged for GTP, which drives the signaling pathway. Here in this pathway, when the ADP molecule binds to the P2Y21 receptor, it causes the activation of GPCR by exchanging GDP for GTP. The GI alpha subunit has the role to inhibit CAMP synthesis. We see upon activation of GI alpha subunit, it inhibits the adenyl cyclase, which in turn deactivates the CAMP pathway or CAMP pathway. The CAMP molecule or CAMP molecule being the secondary messenger is rendered inactive, which leads to the accumulation of calcium inside platelets by inactivating calcium efflux pumps, and that ultimately causes platelet activation. Now on the other hand, when ADP binds to P2Y1 receptor on the right, it activates GPCR which in turn activates GQ alpha subunit. This GQ alpha subunit drives the PLC activation, which finally activates IP3 pathway in multiple steps. This IP3 pathway mediates intracellular release of calcium, which also causes platelet activation. And also remember this PLC activation also drives the granule secretion from platelets. The secretion includes serotonin, PDGF, TXA2, ADP, and PAF. Moreover, this TXA2 and ADP aids in the platelet activation. The serotonin, PDGF, and TXA2 drives the vasoconstriction, which slows down the blood flow during endothelial damage. And after all these steps, we have platelet aggregation that finally plugs the vessel. In platelet aggregation, the platelet activation by ADP leads to aforementioned changes in platelet receptors like GP2B or 3A gets activated when ADP binds to platelets. This receptor further binds fibrinogen with which platelets stick together. And on the other hand, TXA2 further activates more platelets via parakine signaling. That ultimately leads to platelet aggregation and the damaged vessel is plugged. So this is how the platelet mediated hemostasis is driven in order to plug the leak. In the next video, we'll be discussing about the coagulation cascade. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting my work on Patreon and also make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.